Dude, what are you doing? Uh, getting ready to beat this game. What are you doing? We have to go shoot on song. No, it's not. I got another week. Vacation ended two days ago. It did not. My calendar says vacation. Check it again. I'm telling you. It says vacation. Oh. That's strange. You better go get uh, ready. Yeah. yeah. I'm Anthony Walker, friend of the city and your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. This episode, we are coming to you from the Mon Wharf, where just a couple weeks ago, a group of people with questionable judgment jumped in the river on New Year's Day, including our own producer. Welcome to the third season of Unsung. This year, we hope to make it bigger and better, and you can help. We kick off season three with the importance of sport featuring interviews with Clint Hurdle, Kurt Angle, and Special Olympics Hall of Famer Chris Jagelski. But first, let's take a look at what's happening with our area nonprofits. Take a shot at changing the world, a viral video contest from Steeltown Entertainment announced a new partnership with Voices of a People's History, which brings to life the stories of the lesser known people and the movements that built the United States. This year's Take a Shot asked students to create movies about the extraordinary moments when ordinary people use their voices to change the course of history and work towards a more just, equal, and peaceful world. Take a Shot categories include The People Speak, Pittsburgh Innovation, and Polio Then and Now. This year also features special prizes for films focusing on the environment and on nonviolence. More information is available at takeashotcontest.org. You can also check them out at Twitter at takeashot underscore PGH or use the hashtag pound sign takeashot. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Each year, Americans across the country answer that question by coming together on the King holiday this year, Monday, January 21st, 2013, to serve their neighbors and communities. The MLK Day of Service is a part of United We Serve, the President's National Call to Service Initiative. It calls for Americans from all walks of life to work together to provide solutions to our most pressing national problems. There's still plenty of time to plan how you can make an impact on your community. Contact your favorite nonprofit and ask about volunteer opportunities, or find a list of events at the address on your screen. You can tell on some how you served on Twitter with the hashtag pound sign MLK Day Pit. Now, let's find out more about why sports and the Special Olympics are important. Sports to me growing up was about camaraderie, friendship. Um, sportsmanship, friendly competition. You know, I think that sports is a great opportunity for you to really push your limits. Working together as a team and the commitment that being on a team requires you to have is something that was instilled in me as a child by my father. At a very early age, my father uh, gave me an opportunity to engage uh, in sports. Um, he had a passion for it, he played. You know, since I was six years old, I always knew what I wanted to do. Um, it had to be sports related. I come from a family of six kids, all athletes, uh, all of them, uh, just about all of them wrestlers. Um, I, I, I don't know what I would have done without sports. And one day my mom just asked me, uh, what do you, uh, do you want to join Special Olympics? It sounds like it could be fun. And I said, yeah, let's uh, let's get started with everything. With doing one practice, then I went to my first tournament. Then here it is, 17 years later, I'm a Team USA uh, member and a 2009 Special Olympics Pennsylvania Hall of Famer. Well, the way sports helped me get through some of the biggest challenges in my life had a lot to do with um, having a lot of uh, bad things happen before some of my biggest sporting events. Sports has been able to make me overcome these adversities and, 
and be the individual that I am, the real person I am, when I go out there and compete. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will shut down when those kinds of things happen. I seem to open up and become the real person, a fighter. The biggest challenge for me was in middle school. Uh, I got bullied every, almost every day from multiple people. And uh, in Special Olympics, Allegheny County got me through it by uh, accepting me for who I am and my ability to play sports to get through middle school then moving on to being becoming the person that I am today. Well, I think as long as you're engaged in sport, there's going to be many obstacles and, and, and opportunities to, to overcome and to persevere. Uh, that's the beauty of sport. Now, the second year in my, in my major league career, it got to a point where a month in the season, I was actually sent back to AAA. It would have been the first time in my life that somebody set me down and basically told me I wasn't good enough. You know, as a kid, I always wanted to be a little bit better than the other guys. And, um, and, and because of that, uh, you know, I had a competitive side. And playing all day, whether it was football or baseball or basketball or wrestling, which we didn't do much wrestling in our backyard, although we did in our living room, <laughs> um, you know, it, it gave you that competitiveness to want to compete, to be better, to be better than the other guy. The very first coach I had was when I first started, he told me uh, a little story, little lesson about never giving up on yourself and telling other people's, other people uh, the same thing. Don't give up on yourself. Push yourself uh, forward to get better. Then you go from being a, like a bronze, silver bronze medalist to wearing uh, the gold uh, more often. I've been fortunate. I've had a lot of good advice, a lot of good coaching. Uh, my dad coached me up until I got into junior high, and then I had coaches in junior high, different coach in high school, um, throughout the minor leagues and the big leagues. Um, but at the end of the day, I've had to share all the adversity with my father. Uh, but my dad, one day, it was after some, some very challenging personal uh, situations in my life. He just said, you know, get your coat. We're going to take a walk. And I'm like, well, why? Where we go? Get your coat. We're gonna take a walk. And we started walking. And he goes, uh, he goes, I'm gonna share some thoughts with you. And I went to ask a question. He goes, You are to listen on this walk. There'll be no questions. And my dad took me around the block a couple times and just shared with me about life, about honesty, about uh, hard, fair, not fair, um, blessings. Um, basically, if you look for good, you find good. You look for bad, you find bad. Um, what are you here to do with the rest of your life? Are you here for people to serve you? Are you here to serve others? Uh, he just got me to a real good place. I, I really didn't want to go. I didn't want to spend any time with and really helped me find a way to look inside myself deeply for the first time. And basically from about that point on, uh, an entire mentality flipped for me. Um, that it was time for me to start doing good uh, outside of my own house. Uh, to serve others, to make a difference where I could, whether it be with my money, whether it be with my time, my talent, whatever it might be, but to really find a way to, to help others that are in so much more need uh, than I'm in. To get involved, uh, to get involved in Special Olympics, uh, you, you don't have to be an athlete. You can be a coach, a volunteer, or or anything you want to. Or if you have a son, if you have a kid, or some other family member, you can tell them, hey, I was just at a Special Olympics event, and I think it will be neat for whoever to join. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, giving back is the best thing you can do, especially when you're in a position like me where people look up to you as an Olympic gold medalist, as a world champion, even as a professional wrestler. There are a lot of people that look up to me for that. But, uh, you know, it's just something that I think any and every athlete should think about is how can you give back to what you've been blessed with. Special Olympics, one word. Probably opportunity. Courage. If I had to choose one word, I think it would be love. Special Olympic athletes are definitely the most dedicated. I'm a fan of Special Olympics. 
You can be too. Be a fan. Branded by the Girls Math Science Partnership, Canteen is a kit that is built to connect teens to science in a way that captures their imagination and cultivates their long-term interest in science as a career. Let's hear more about it. We all have skills and talents that can help improve our world. Canteen illuminates how you as a teen can start creating your own unique career path now towards an awesome future. I think it was fun and challenging, and I thought it was kind of cool because some of the questions we never talked about at school. So if that's the correct answer, like you get a little bit about what the correct answer means. If you get the answer right, actually even if you get it wrong, it tells you like a, about a paragraph about what the why that answer is right. And also down in the right corner, it has related careers, which, um, just show different careers that that question would apply to. Haitian Families First invite you to the first back to school party on January 31st at Bricolage. You can support the work of Ali and Jamie McMucci. Yes, the amazing Pittsburgh sisters who coordinated the airlift of all the Haitian kids right after the earthquake and their foundation, Haitian Families First, in providing education, nutrition, and healthcare resources to Haitian families and helping Haitian families achieve self-sufficiency. All the schools in Haiti are private and $180 will cover all tuition, books, and uniforms for a child to attend for one year. Unfortunately, the average Haitian family earns only $180 over the course of four months, so school for many children is an impossibility. Suggested donation for this happy hour is $20, so for every nine attendees, we should be able to send a kid to school for a year and support HFF's amazing other programs. Learn more at HaitianFamiliesFirst.org. City Theater and Pop City invite you to the Green Room Party for the witty Broadway comedy seminar from the creator of the NBC series Smash. $25 gets you in and includes a ticket to see seminar, an after party with the cast, free beer, wine, and soda post show. You can check it out Friday, February 1st at 8 p.m. at City Theater, 1300 Bingham Street in the South Side. For tickets, use code GREENROOM, all caps, by phone 412-431-CITY, that's 2489, or online at the address on your screen. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter, at PGH on video, or hashtag unsung. Thank you for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. As always, you can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself here. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go watch Mike Sword jump in the river on New Year's Day and continue to laugh. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car.